so last time we were talking about if statements, I'm sorry, about the uh, loops, and um, we did the, for, I'm sorry, the while loop, the do while loop, like I left my marker from the other platform. Uh, any questions in the loops? All right. So we had said. last time, didn't we? And uh, we came to the conclusion that factorial, we know how many iterations our loop is going to have. So in our UML diagram, we did it like this. Um, Let's start program. We got our variables initialized. We asked the user. And then we had a question. The answer was yes. We did a calculation. The answer is no. We display the factorial. And then we stop. inputs we have um, the number and then we have the answer and when we initialize the answer to one and then we ask the number that the user enters and then we say if the number is greater than equal than one We multiply um, the answer times the number, and then we increment, we increment the number. The answer was no, we display the answer. We stop. And this was an int. Or something like that. When we code this, we code it like this. And at 
the end we um, clean up the number and this is the end of the main. So in the short version that's what we did last time, right? And so if the user enter five, that works. So we're gonna break down this while loop. So this this was our logical test, right, or condition. That's what we're testing. And that will execute us while that um, while that number is greater or equal than one. Here we declare our variable, right? variables here. Um, let me add another variable because if I want to print the original number here, I'm sorry, here's the answer, right? Let me add another variable just real quick. I'm going to call this house. Let's see what's I'm gonna say counter equal one. And let's change this a little bit. Um, this will make it easier. I go right here. I can say now the original number never gets changed, the number factorial equals whatever the answer is. So, so as long as the counter is less or equal than number, so it starts at one, it will multiply counters the answer times one, two, three, all the way to five, and increments the counter. So the answer will be the same there. There, I added this variable because it's going to make it easier to explain the next thing. So this is our logical test. So we have our variable declaration, right? And this counter thing, I initialize it to 1. I initialize it to 1 because I can't Factorial zone start at zero, starts at one. And up. Technically you can't take the factorial of zero. And the answer is one. Is it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <clears throat> well, how would you it, it it has to be it, 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 because like the, the factorial of n minus one is equal to the factorial of n divided by n or something. And so if n is 1, then it will be the answer to the factorial of 0. It ends up being like 0 divided by 1. Or I, or I mean, wait, no. Or, um, 
or it ends up being one five by one or something. But it's yeah. Okay. It's weird. So this is the body of the loop, right? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, initialization is a, a new method. That's not a method. What it, if I just, in this line, the first line that I declare the variable, what's the value of counter? One. No. In the first line where I declare this line. Oh, uh, it's, a, it's an integer. What's the value, not the type? Mm, doesn't have a value. It has a value. You know what the value is? No. Nobody knows, right? Because no. there's whatever voltage was there and whatever that memory address was used for before. It's, like it's, it's just garbage, it's, it's right? Yeah. So the next line, I change that to one. I need, I give the variable an initial value. That's all it is. That's what initialization means. And this counter is my my increment or <coughs> decrement, whatever. It's actually is increment. You incrementing negative numbers. If you had minus minus, I, did I show you this? You just told us about it, but you never like explained it. Oh, this is just incremented that number by one. If you put two negatives, it will be decremented by one. This is the same as same. This is the same as saying counter equals counter plus one. So there is. What if I want to increment by ten, not by one? It's, you can't do that. You will have to do something like this, right? <coughs> or if you want to be a lazy programmer, but not as not a lazy programmer, a smart programmer that types less. Mm -hmm. We'll do it like this. That's a shortcut. So whatever this variable value has, increment the 10 and put it back. Anyway, um, so inside the CPU, well, the CPU is built with a bunch of registers. In the circuitry, there's a register called counter register. It's abbreviated with a CX. Address start with 0x. The registers, we have AX, BX. That's how they label them. Um, so in the while loop, takes a one CPU cycle to evaluate, evaluate this expression and the result will be true or false. And the next CPU cycle then it will say while true or, true or while for false. So it takes like at least two CPU cycles. Yes? Uh, the CPU is a, is it the, is it the RAM? No, the CPU is the uh, processor, central uh, processor unit. Oh, the it's not the operating system. It's not the same as the operating system. No, it's hardware. It's the actual, oh, yeah. actual circuitry. So, now the... Um, so it takes at least two, two CPU cycles, right? <coughs> if you're writing software for desktop, it doesn't really matter. Your computer is billions of instructions per second. So instead of using one, you use two. Nobody's not going to notice the difference, right? But if you have limited RAM or you're programming hardware, for instance, you're writing drivers or even if you go write PlayStation games, it's all C. So the, we, we call them bed sheets because there's like long, long pages of code and it's just notepad. At least that's how I wrote them in notepad. I didn't like Visual Studio for those. Um, anyways, so 
you have to be conscious of performance. So, if you have a loop like this, I know before I enter the loop how many times I'm going to execute that loop. So, because I know how many times, and is I have this variable, this escape clause, we we'll call it, right? That is just incrementing or decrementing. Then the while loop is not the more efficient way to do it. As we look at the performance in the hardware. So, uh, one second. So, there's this other loop, the one we didn't talk about was the for loop. So the for loop the syntax has it looks like a function. And it has quarter brackets. Doesn't need to. And there are three sections. It's like a function that takes parameters, but the parameters in a function we separate them by commas. In a for loop, it's the only one separated by semicolons. And the uh, semicolon means end of instruction. So, the first part of the for loop, it's called, this is your logical, I'm sorry, your variable initialization. And optionally, declaration. That what goes in here. In the second one, it's um, it's gonna be your logical test. And the last one is your increment. And in here was the value of the loop. So if in here in my while loop I do this. Basically, I want to display whatever the counter variable has. In this case, when the number is 5, what will counter display here? Can you tell me? 6, I guess. Do you agree with them? Why not? Yeah. It is six. Yes. <laughs> so, well, it's like an if statement, right? That just repeats over and over. <coughs> so, I start counter on one. So, it's one less or equal than five, sure. Increments. Now, counter is two. It's two less or equal than five, sure. Increments. No, it's three. It's three less or equal than five, yeah. So now I got my answer is six. Increments counter, now it's four. It's 
4 less or equal than 5, yeah. So now I got 24 in my answer. Now counter is 5. So I go up. Is 5 less or equal than 5? Yeah, right? So I go in here. Now I got 24 times 5. That's 120. The computer doesn't know since I look in here. It doesn't know how it got there, right? It's just doing the next instruction. And then this one now is what? 6. Goes back. Is 6 less or equal than 5? No. Now I exit the loop. So is that, that's the condition that made my loop exit, right? When counter was over 5. So here the counter will be display as 6. So this is pretty much equivalent. So let's say counter equals. So I will comment, I will take out this one and I'll replace this whole thing. So my variable initialization is that one. So here's counter equal one. Then is my logical test. This is my logical test. So my increment goes here, which is this line. And then the body of the loop would just be because it looks more simply. It, it looks quite simple than that one. So when do you use a while loop? We're going to talk about files. And I told you, um, I think I did say it that last time that you can look at the properties of a file you've changed and the size on the disk is different than the size of the file just because your file is fragmented. So when we, you are doing something sequential and you're waiting to hit the end of the file you will use a while loop while there's something to read basically. And we're gonna have a whole couple weeks just about files how they work. So, I'm just waiting for something to happen. In the for loop, it's just a counter. I, if I forget to put the counter plus plus here, I get an infinite loop, right? Can I make this an infinite loop? Sure, you can break it. You can break anything. You can put counter uh, negative negative and it'll decrement the counter it will never exit the loop so why would you do that so if I replace and I'll put an asterisk on the lines if I replace this line and this with this Oh, how many lines do I execute with the for loop? Just one. So I can do this. It's the same as the if. Only well, if you don't execute one line, you can do that. What happens if I'm silly and I do this? Will I get an? Do I get an error? No. <coughs> if I do this here. I get an infinite loop, right? In the well, do I get an infinite loop here? No. Oh, I don't because this portion is incremented. <laughs> the only thing that never executes is the body of the loop. And the body of the loop is only one line. In this, when I do the while loop, the counter was part of the, the, the increment was part of the uh, body. In here it's not. So this one is just increase the counters, doesn't do anything, but never gets stuck in an infinite loop. This one will. So if I replace those lines with this two lines, 
and then I do this print statement. What will counter print if I use a for loop? Will it print anything different than the while loop? You said if I do while loop, it's going to print 6 here, right? What will this one print? Anybody? It's not going to print anything? Contrary exists, yeah, of course it's going to print something. So these two, they're equivalent. It's just the way they are executed in the hardware is different. So, is your logical test any different? No. They're just pretty much equivalent. They're not the same because they're executed differently. The end result is the same. So if the end result is the same, what this is going to print? Six. Same thing. Because that's what makes, well, it doesn't quite make the um, exit the loop. It's just a counter, it's just incrementing. Questions? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I started analyzing, uh, and, but I, don't, I realized that I didn't know what number five, uh, uh, why numbers. Initialize the number as a, as five. Uh, because I didn't want to write scan if, and then the user enters five. So this one is entered by the user. Just a random number. Oh, well, any other questions? Yeah. So the four code on the left. It's basically saying that counter equals one, and then you're uh, incrementing that one by plus one, and then eventually when it reaches to the number five, after it reaches five, it'll execute the counter code, right? Or the print counter equals. So this code, we can read it this other way, okay? From counter starting at one until it reaches number increment the counter by one and then you execute this code that many times or you can say from some people say from from one to five that's five iterations yeah, actually visual basic uses uses the for loop process two from a number to the other number including uh, this for loop because there's only one line after and I don't have curly brackets this is the only one that executes and this goes in here instead of that while that's what I was trying to do okay. now any other qu yes um, my compiler after I would copy and uh, and in, and type it all in my compiler. The the same exact. Uh, I'll get the same exact number uh, five. I don't understand the question. There's, uh, right. there's, since there's no scan f, my my uh, program yeah. would still ask the the user to for me to type in some. But then you put a red number. Oh, oh, oh. I'm just, I didn't want to write the whole program we did the last class. Oh. I just abbreviated it this way. Where, now, where, uh, sorry, where in, where in this uh, program would the user uh, be prompted to... Uh, you add it. You will add it. Instead of this number five, you just prompt the user there. Ask the oh, user with the printf and then you do the scan if I just didn't want to write that much. Oh, so, um. <clears throat> let's 
write something else. So let's say I have this program. So I'm going to make a timer, and I'm going to have the timer go from 23 hours and 59 minutes until zero, in a countdown. So I'll say, well, the hours are greater or equal than zero. something inside this and I'm going to do the increment of the hours. Then while the minutes are greater or equal than zero, I'm gonna increase the counter. For now it's going to look funky because I have, um, if, I, if I have one, zero, one hour and one minute, it's going to be one column one instead of zero one zero one. I will fix the format in, in a minute. And then I decrement the minutes. What is after the after Backslash N? No, before, like, yeah. After this, oh, a column? Oh, is that a column? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like it looks. It takes like a clock. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So, I'm going to ask you how many iterations this printf line executes. How many times is printf lines print Once. something? Once per cycle? I mean, I want the total number. 59 times, 
So I'll start at 23.59 and I'll end at 23.0, right? Yes. So if I want to fix it, then I'll do hours here. No hours. Oh. Dash and eat up. So I don't need this line. Mm -hmm. Now we will print all the way to zero zero, right? So if I were to do this. This line in blue, what will that print? <coughs> so are we, what will be the values of these three variables? Write it. So, I ask how many iterations this one executes. All the way I say how many? Just give me the number. Twenty-four. It will be sixty twenty-four, so it will be fourteen forty. So counter will be 1,440, 1,440. What about hours and minutes? What made my minutes exit? What value of minutes made my loop end? Zero. What made what value of means made my while loop end? No. Less than zero or zero No. Less than eighty one. Yeah. Less than zero. So it'll be eighty one for both hours and minutes because that's what made my my loop exit. I guess I didn't word it properly. So, if I want to rewrite this as a for loop, so this is called an embedded, you know, while loop. If I want to rewrite this as a for loop, let's write the whole program. I'm going to exclude the uh, counter. So we got this nested loop.
So I'm going to initialize and declare at the same time my counter variable. same way. Inside this loop, I declare my variable here. I initialize it. I'm sorry, here. Let's look at this here. That's my inner loop, right? That's the body of this other loop. So this other loop has a loop inside. So it's a nested loop. So I initialize my variable right here. I have my condition, and then I have my increment or decrement. It works the same way. So, will this execute more or less times than this version? No. No, it'll be the same times. It will be 1440. The what now? There's no uh, line that converts minutes to hours, so it's just going to count the minutes and then count the hours. How many times do you think this is going to execute? 60 or 84, because there's no like minutes equals 60, right? It's just going to go down to 60 minutes and then count full hours after that. No. That's, that's why I did it this way. Uh, so it reads top to bottom, right? And uh, so I see this line. Oh, it's trying to main. Okay. I see a for loop. So the for loop says declare a variable. So I got this. Got my RAM. It looks like this. if I write it like this. You'll get this. Get a red squiggly line there. Why? Yeah, because the means exists only here, right? So very sickly the variable here is out of scope. So, that being said, computer is here. Uh, so this is the line I'm executing right now. The computer says, oh, you gotta use a for loop, we're gonna use the uh, counter register, and you need a variable called int, or that int called hours. 
I give it an initial value of 23. Right? And then it sets the condition in the register, and then it's done. Now, move to the next line, right? Now I'm here. The computer says, okay, we gotta create a for loop. It doesn't know what it did before, right? It says, oh, create a for loop. And we're gonna call it, we need a counter, and it's gonna be minutes. Give it an initial value of 59. And we're gonna do the decrement, whatever set up inside. And then it goes and does this line 60 times, right? One is when minutes reaches negative one, so it goes down from 59 to zero, and make sure it reaches negative one, right? Because it's the same thing as here. I make my exit, make my end my loop. So when it reaches that, this is this one, Right, and then I'm done with the for loop. Right, I did it 60 times. <coughs> Minutes is negative one. Exits my loop, and then it goes to the next curly bracket, which is here. What happened to the minutes here when I tried to write it? It's out of scope, right? That means guess what happened? Minutes doesn't exist anymore. Right, so I go up again. Now I'm here. Now hours is 22. Okay. And sets it up. I'll continue, right? Now it goes to the next line and says, oh, I need to do a for loop. Starts over again. So yes, it will do, this, do the same 1440. Uh, also, hours is counting up there. Oh. Yeah. You just want to see if you are awake. See if you stop at Starbucks on the way in. Oh, guilty. I didn't even see that. So, questions? Yeah. When I type in the, the double form, it says hours and minutes under the printf is hours. Because Like this exactly? Yeah. Check your uh, curly brackets. Unless you put the uh, semicolon at the end here or something. Any other questions? Let's try to make the timer work. So, I'm going to start a new project. That's why it keeps Remove, don't forget to remove that checkbox. And. Yes, yes. I don't know how it looked in the uh, video one with the this. In this case, it's just mobile technology. Uh, make it bigger. So that, um, this double thing here was at the top. All okay, it does is. Okay. Alright. Yeah. Basically, instead of having a separate so. I put it on the bottom and I put this on the top. Well, we'll loop those, which basically. Of course. Of course, you're supposed to have your comments. Because if the function is, it'll look to before the evening. Just the fucking function. It won't look after it was before it. So. So, so instead of actually putting the whole function there, this here, 
and this tells in it'll say that it's not public and it'll have to take two book below it instead for this function. It, 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 it's just another way to write it, but it's not this. Usually they didn't know what that is just because you uh, show it. This, um, so, so basically, I think with this one, I, I don't find the if you think the thing is each variable needs to be defined so it knows what type of variable it is. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and then I can scan, scan that function to basically define it. Maybe it's another way of defining it. it. So instead of saying, you know. All right, so that's what we had in the uh, or before. And if we look at this, when I run this, it looks a little bit funky. I mean, so I'm running. I think you forgot the set of curly brackets on your second floor. Yeah. 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 So, if I look at my program, let's make this uh, look at my numbers, zero dot zero, right? And if I scroll up, it started at 458, but I didn't start my portal, but 458. Why is that? There's nothing wrong with the program. The command prompt is only going to show you something like that. So if I do this, I stop. Um, so now it's at 23. Next one's at 22 when I debug it. So what's happening is, I simply, the command prompt has a limit how many lines it can display at the same time. Just run out of lines. So how can I make, pad the uh, numbers? I don't want it to be zero dot, uh, column zero. I want it to be zero, zero. So, if I want to do that, I think I do it like this. Let me see. Yeah. yeah. So this uh, format in printf, is saying, I want two spaces, and if there's a blank space, put a zero in it. So we talk about escape characters, and this is escape character, right? The uh, backslash n. So I will print a new line. If we use a t, will be a tab. If we use, what if I want to print a backslash? So I have to do two, right? If I want to do call a uh, quote, single quotes, double quotes, I use those state characters. If I didn't have this, it would look like that, right? If I didn't do the new line, so it's just put any numbers next to each other, so you notice 0, 0, 015, 0, 0, 014, and so on. It looks like a mess. So, what if I want to go back? Can I go back? I can do backspaces. I think I can. Honestly, I haven't done this in a while, so let's see if it works. I did. Uh, let's do another print F at the end.
But if I run this, it just printed zero zero. So I'll change this. Okay. So why is that? What happened to the other numbers? I can't see that. It just printed zero zero column zero zero. So the backspace worked. So I erased the previous number. And what's happening is keep erasing the number. And it goes so fast that all you see is the last one. So I probably took less than a millisecond to run the whole thing. I don't know. But it, yes. Does it matter how many backspaces things what? Bless you. I have five. So I did five backspaces. Otherwise, it'll look funky. So. Can I remove this card in bracket? What do you think? I don't have a red squiggly line anywhere, right? Bless you. only one line to execute, then you don't need the curly brackets. And you will see this, I mean, you don't have to do it like this, just put the curly brackets, make it easier on you. But when you go out and program, fix somebody else's code, because that's how you're going to start maintaining code, you might encounter that. And the reason is, for loop, it's declaring the first one where the hours are. And it sees, it can only execute one line if there's no curly brackets. And the next line, actually, oh, I see two lines. Actually, there's only one line. Because all it sees is a for loop. And this printf line belongs to that for loop. So it sees it as one whole. I mean, you could have 100 lines in the bless you in the inner loop and the, f the top the outer for loop is going to see it as one like if you had an if statement or a while statement or a switch statement it's going to see it as one all right now this is not in the book and i don't know if it's going to work but let's try this let's put the computer to see I'm gonna see. Not there. I think I need. Uh, I need this. I need. Uh, let's put ten. Did that work? No. Undefined. Where the hell is this? Uh, this. I wanted to uh, make it go to this need for like pause for a few seconds.
CPU, the job of the CPU, well, the operating system, what it does is schedule jobs in the CPU. It gives you the impression it's multitasking when reality is letting this program run for a few milliseconds, then caches it out, puts a new program, and so on. Actually, a new thread, it's not a program, it's a thread. So, this thread. This program has a thread running in the CPU. And I use this function called sleep and put it to sleep for 10 milliseconds. So, and then stops, then the CPU puts another program for 10 milliseconds, and then this one wakes up, and then continues in the next loop and so on. I didn't put if I put a thousand milliseconds, it will be at one second, so it will be here all day, right? Because the timer goes all, the whole day. So, questions? So now, you know how to do formatting in the printf, backspaces, and you know how to pause the program. <laughs> 